<sighs> Helps if you turn your mic on. So there should be sound here momentarily, hopefully. I'll give it a second. Somebody shall comment if there's sound. I always leave the mic on all week long because I forget to turn the thing off. So I finally remember to turn it off and then I forget to turn it on. I know, right, Corey? Ugh, what can we do? A little rusty. I should have gone through everything and made sure I was all the boxes were checked. So, oh, well, you know, I mean, it's it's an external mic. It's not like it eats a ton of batteries, but I swear I change batteries out of that more than more than that. So, but oh, it's been a while, I guess, which is, I don't know, good and bad, maybe. I was afraid people would forget about me, but I've been kind of, I don't know, last year wore me out. All of last year wore me out. So, hopefully this year is better, but not our normal night, but I had to deal with the rest of my wonderful business taxes, right? And paperwork. Everyone loves paperwork, so, and receipts. Got to make sure that's all tip-top shape for Uncle Sam, so. Oh, so hopefully we'll get a few more on here. We'll give it another minute or two, but. Hey, Megan, how are you? I got Connie, Corey, as always, Pamela, the old crew, as always, which is awesome. And I think, oh, I was going to tell you, Connie, you didn't show up to Coffee and Clicks, and guess what I had? I had a book for you. So, actually, I had a whole box of books this time. But, oh, well, there's always next time, so. I figured I'd rub a little salt in that wound. Since I forgot the last, what, two times? Two times, three times? Oh. But yeah, so I was trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about tonight, and I thought, well, you know what? Um, why not? Uh, let's talk about the workshop. It's coming up. This one probably won't be too terribly long this evening, but uh, um, oh, I got somebody from YouTube. Hello. Hello from Tom. Oh, I know who that is now. I put two and two together in the old brain. Um, <laughs> oh, Connie, hey, LOL, I figured that would happen, right? I literally was leaving the door and I thought, oh, crap, I need to go get books and, or a book. And I was like, ah, I'm just going to like, I had a case open, but I just grabbed a new case because it was a lot easier. <laughs> but yeah, I figured I'd talk about the workshop, right? I don't know how long it will take, but uh, I'll show some stuff and I'll, you know, hopefully everybody will... I've got a few people already interested. They've been chomping at the bit for the link. So, um, and after the live tonight, so nine o'clock ish, the links or before, I don't remember when I said it, they should go live. So I've got two options for the workshop uh, in September, which we'll go through in a minute. One is kind of my fail safe. So just in case we, I get more people that are interested than I thought. So, you know what? Let's get going here. So I'm going to pop up. Hey, Mary. There we are. So, hello, Dennis, all the way from California. I will see you shortly, sir. Oh, I will be, I think I'm arriving on a flight from Southwest to LAX on the 5th at like 11. So by the time I get a rental car and drive through your wonderful traffic, I'll be up at Paul's for a while. So... Um, I don't know what I'm going to do there other than hang out at a camera store for the first time in a long time. And maybe if you want, we'll have to catch dinner. Who says no to good food, right? So, let, you know, so last year I said, I'll just get started here. So last year I said, I want to do workshops and classes, right? So I've got some classes out on the website. Um, ICM was pretty successful back in January. We had three or four people. I kind of did a poo-pooey job of, um, like, you know, promoting the, the ones that are still up there, um, which is fine. I haven't had any signups, but I thought, because I put a lot of time into the workshop planning, um, I kind of went, uh, oh, that'll be April 5th, unless Cinco de Mayo's changed there, Dennis. <laughs> April 5th, unless I said May, I meant April 5th. But back to my workshop. So I was trying to think, you know, why not go big, go home? So I had stumbled across ages ago, the Missouri State Penitentiary. Um, I think Photo Club was interested in going one time and nobody said they wanted to go, or maybe they did go and I didn't catch the rest of it. But so I thought, well, if I'm going to offer a workshop, I might as well make it fun, right? Something different. Um, I think that's the whole point of workshops is something different and a ways from home, right? I mean, we're always around Cedar Rapids, so let's find something we, we can't get to normally. Um, so I thought, well, I'll look into this. 
And I was like, hmm, it got a little bit more interesting. And I thought, well, it's definitely a, a different place. Um, so I got into it and did some digging and made a few uh, contact calls back and forth, back and forth for quite a while before I decided to do it. And then I know on the live I've asked in the past how, uh, how people would like lodging and so on and so forth. So I took everybody's uh, into consideration of what they think would be nice. And I got really bummed out because it was almost a thousand dollars for the workshop with hotels, but don't let that price scare you because it's way less than that now um, with some creative thinking and some creativeness and going back to a few other ideas that were given to me by you guys. So um, let's get started on this whole kind of thing, right? All ah, right. Uh, you can't escape a quote. So education is a passport to the future for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today, right? And I think that's what workshops and, and learning does, right? It it takes us to places in the future as things will come across that we didn't know how to photograph maybe, but we prepared for it. So therefore we went to a workshop, learned something. Um, I, I think in any photo class you take or any workshop, all you got to do is take one thing back, one one thing, and to me, it's a whole win. You don't need a whole um, plethora of um, things, right? We don't need to have nine thousand things. But if that's if you've learned nine thousand things, that's even better. But you know, but that's what workshops are, right? Uh, I was I recently told a friend last night on the phone where she was asking me about my job, and we talk like every other month for a couple hours, literally on the phone. And she was, you know, I brought up the thing is if you're not you're not learning if you're not uncomfortable. And I think that's that's a big thing too. Not that you'll be uncomfortable at a workshop, but uh, just learning um, new stuff. It can be stressful or weird or like not understanding. Like I hate business taxes. I suck at accounting and bookkeeping because I don't understand all the terms like my wife does and says she does for a living. But every year it gets better because I choose to learn a little bit more or I come across, um, oh, hey, Paul, that's okay. We haven't gotten very far into it anyway. Um, but you know, there's things that I have to learn terms and each year it's better and better and better. And last year I got way better at doing bookkeeping monthly for about the first three months and then it fell off. But some of the changes that I did last year, um, that I implemented, Hey Diane, uh, are much better this year. It, I was only down here for a couple hours really. Um, and I just went and just printed off receipts that I have and about 18,000 logins that I have to get through. But, right, so I learned a few new things and now prepare me, prepare me for next year. So that's what uh, learning is all about, whether it's a workshop or a task or whether there's a task at work you have to do or just a basic life task, right? We can learn. So hopefully that's what we'll do in the workshop or we should. So uh, there we are. This is not my photo. I pulled it offline. But to kind of give you an idea of where we're going if you choose to tag along, which I hope you can, is this wonderful place. So very different, right? You think about going to a workshop where it's all pretty flowers and, you know, and landscapes, right? Those you see a lot of, um, but Missouri State Penitentiary, Penitentiary, boy, super interesting place after I did my my quick one and a half hour kind of walk through tour with them. They let me take some photos, which you've all seen this week, but there'll be a couple other ones in here. But it's a huge, huge place. Um, but it's not really a lot of walking. Um, you're probably in the main building very briefly. Um, that building to the top left will be in and that middle one on the right. We won't go into the far, far right one as far as I'm aware, because that is, I think, condemned or something. You're gonna tear it down unfortunately. Um, but then there's a spot I didn't get to go because it was locked, but my mom took the tour. We get to go see the gas chamber. I know it's kind of weird and creepy, but I, it's kind of cool. I was told that's a different way to get there, but it's really not a huge amount of walking, but it's enough. But this just kind of gives you that basic crazy overlay of, of this place um, and how big it is. And this doesn't even really show how big it is. So so let's, I might as well talk about the history, right? Um, I think if we're going to learn something, we might as well learn something. So uh, Missouri State Penitentiary was decommissioned in 2004, um, and it was actually the oldest continuing operating prison west of the Mississippi. So it's actually, I think, 100 years older than Alcatraz. 
Um, they've had famous inmates, um, James Earl Ray, uh, Sonny something. He was a boxer. Um, somebody else said that, uh, I can't think of one of the crazy serial killers, was there temporarily. I don't know, it's, it's nuts. But, you know, so it's totally old. To think that it's actually older than Alcatraz by 100 years is crazy because you always hear um, – Alcatraz, you know, you say a prison, everybody knows Alcatraz, right? So when the prison opened, it was 1836, to kind of put a time frame in, that's when the Battle of the Alamo was going on in Texas. And Andrew Jackson was serving his second term. So that really puts it into how old this is. So when you start looking at things to photograph, it's pretty endless. I could have been in the second cell block probably all day because it was just like around every corner there's something to photograph. And I was there about... I was there in the afternoon. No, I was there in the morning when we'll be there. So the lighting is super cool coming through the window in the oldest cell house. It's pretty cool. Um, but so the big thing with the prison is they do public history, but just to throw it out there, it's supposed to have paranormal things. Just throw that out there for everybody. Some people don't like paranormal things. Um, but, oh, there we are. I skipped ahead, but uh, what does it say? Famous inmates such as, oh, Sonny Liston, that's who it is, and James Rolray. Um, and then the gas chamber, I jumped ahead going through my head. But yeah, 40 men and women were executed, so it, it kind of an interesting place, um, unfortunately. And then uh, several housing units, and then they had the upper yard, which I don't think I went through. But um, so back in 1967, what was it? Uh, it was named by Time Magazine as the bloodiest 47 acres. Um, just due to the violence, like, um, situations in the prison. And it was also, if I remember right, in the 50s, I want to say like 55 or 57, that they had a riot. So that was super. Um, oh, did I see any scary things? No. I didn't see anything scary while I was there, but I will say she didn't really tell me where we were at any given point other than this. Here's another cell house block. This is the oldest one. Um but I did go down a, a set of steps, and it's really dark. There's not much lights in there. And I got this really, really uneasy feeling that I didn't like. And then as we left, she told me that's where death row inmates were kept. That was about as creepy as it got. Um, so I didn't have any, like, preconceived notions of things either. I know they do ghost tours. Um, I don't know if I'd want to do the whole, like, night ghost tour there. It's, it's a little weird if you believe in paranormal. Um, but it's... It's, it was definitely interesting, but I would say the rest of it, no. You know, I didn't get any of those really scary things or weird feelings, but it's super full of history. It really is. Um, I And then to be able to go down, and the, the workshop is going to be, I booked the longest photo workshop. So they do paranormal tours, regular tours. Um, the day that I went, they did a tour with a former corrections officer who worked there for like 31 years. And they also had a former inmate who was giving a tour, too. So that was really cool. My mom went on those. Um, hey, Esther. Um, and they also they do those two tours and then they do photo tours. So the workshop is, I think, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because they only offer it on certain times. And as far as I'm aware, it's like completely open to where you want to go with within reason within the facility as long as it's not marked off or chained up so um the lady was super like knowledgeable and nice about it um so we'll have plenty of things to photograph but there's such a history there there's a lot of just like little details to photograph in the oldest cell block and i'll show you some photos of that here in a little bit uh yeah former inmate yep uh yeah there was a former inmate there he uh i don't i don't know if, I didn't go on the tour, so uh, my mom was on that tour. So um, he made a comment like, "I'm." He didn't call himself a felon. I think my mom said he called him like a convict. He'll always be a convict, um, which I found interesting. So, what are we going to learn? Well, there's a lot of things to learn. So, once you see the what I call investment at the end, um, it's a steal of the deal, really, because. We're going to do a lot. And I wanted to offer more to the workshop than just come to your, bring your camera. Let's go to a cool place. And let's, if you got a question, ask me, right? So the big thing will be low light and the use of a tripod. That, I mean, I photographed everything handheld. Um, 
and underexpose my images for more creepy, spooky look, right? Or more of how I was envisioning the images. But it's you're going to have a world of being to be open to so many possibilities with the tripod there. Um, but it's all low light. I, as far as I remember, there's no light lights there they turn on. It's all artificial or no artificial lighting. So it's super cool. Um, the big thing is you're going to get to know your camera. Anytime you go to a workshop or you do a teaching thing or go somewhere where you learn something, you always, you get to know your camera better, right? And we can sit here and I could show you like, if you had the Nikon Z30, I could tell you, well, this is the mode dial and this is manual mode and this is aperture mode and this is how the screen flips out. And if you watch it, that's one thing. But actually, when you put it into your hands and learn, oh, this is how it flips out. This is how it works. And see the changes, then you're going to get a much better thing. So obviously, you're going to get to know your camera a lot better. Um, and obviously, um, I'm still pretty well versed in about every camera brand. I'm getting a little weaker at that as the newer stuff comes out. But it's all pretty easy. I can step anybody through any camera they've probably got because they all work the same in some format. Um, we're going to talk about creating a photograph versus taking a photograph. So there's going to be two classes while we're at the workshop. So there'll be one, which I'll go through in the itinerary later, the one the night before, and then there's going to be one after we get back from photographing. So the night before, I'm going to talk about just, you know, the conditions that are there, how to create a photograph, right? Like, let's just not wander around and just say, hmm, that looks cool. Click, 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 right? I want you to look at something and say, hmm, this is interesting. How can I make this better? Take a picture, review it, and say, okay, what, what, what is in here that I don't like? This, okay, how do I get this out of the frame? Or do I change a lens, right? I, I want you to get into a thinking process. So we'll definitely go through thinking versus creating or sorry about creating a photograph versus just a snapshot, right? Just a click, documenting something versus creating a photograph. Um, and then I'm gonna teach you how to edit and create a workflow um, when it comes to your editing. Um, and, and also kind of make you think about while we're shooting, poss the possibilities of way we might wanna shoot a photograph. Like I'm, I'm thinking of the ideas where I might ask you a question like, well, what do you want this photo to look like? You know, like what, what's the feel or a theme, you know, or the mood? And you know, I want it to be dark and spooky. Okay, well, how do we do that, right? Well, we're going to underexpose it. But, and then I want you to start thinking ahead into editing, right? Like how can we do that? What do I need to do in the moment, creating the photograph, so when it comes to post-process, we're not in there for 45 minutes to an hour per image, right? So we'll go through that. And I'm going to teach you how to print images from a Canon printer. So I'm going to lug my Canon printer all the way down to um, Missouri. And I'm gonna teach everybody as a general group on creating print proofs kind of things and Lightroom and how to export with settings. So we start getting this screen matches our monitor to matches our print that comes out. And it's not as scary um, as it is, but kind of give you that idea. And um, I think just in general, it's just going to be about a couple things. Um, high contrast scenes. There's places where it's going to be super dark and super bright. So how do we do that? Do we bracket and then edit from there? Or do we do HDR in a sense and, and stack? So you're going to really learn how to photograph high contrast scenes. And very just overall, you know, working with even different, even white balance will be kind of a challenge because you'll be mixing natural light through some windows or even the color because there's so much color it sounds weird but there's a lot of color and texture in the prison in itself with age and things start to deteriorate there's lots of deterioration in there and it's super cool so you get lots of different colors and how do we use color and tone and all that stuff and then we're going to talk about some camera metering modes um the night before too so we'll talk about you know do you want to use spot metering or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So a whole bunch of, and there's going to be a whole lot more, right? There's going to be things you're going to learn from me, but the biggest thing is you're going to learn from each other. So, um, you know, we're all going to run into the same issue and, you know, we, later we can discuss or even before how, how do we, you know, um, fix these things as we're shooting. And I think the other biggest thing that I wanted um, the workshop to be is camaraderie, right? 
So when I was thinking of lodging, I'll come up with that here in a little bit. Like how that's when I when I think about classes, like when I took Trent's class um, over at Com University a couple of years ago, I um, that's camaraderie because we were as a group for like four Sundays in a row. And that's where Peggy knew of me. I don't know if Peggy's on tonight, um, but Peggy knew me from some stuff somehow on the interwebs. But then I finally got to meet her. And then now we, we talk and she comments on photos. So it's, it's creating friendship too and new friends with other photographers. And I think when I look at classes and workshops and conventions I've ever done, yeah, I go for the information, but 99.9% .9 of the time, the reason I'm going is to talk photography, meet new people, and now I have a bigger network, right? Because I don't know, I run into a photographer one time who she was like, oh, you do that kind of photo stuff? Oh, cool. Somebody's asked me about doing that one time and I didn't want to do a food shoot. Well, now that I know you do it, so if somebody comes and asks me, I can. And even though you're, even if you're not doing this professionally, you might have somebody that's like, I don't like doing portraits. But I know Esther does some portraits, so she could meet somebody and say, oh, I just got a family that wants a couple of portraits. Well, oh, I, got a, I know a lady, a friend that can do it. So, right, that's really what it, it comes down to. Um, as well. Oh, I just saw your comment, Diane, about, yeah, I saw that in some of your photos. I'm assuming that was like the texture color thing. Um, but I think now, come on. Oh, so what to expect? Um, kind of in general, you got to expect low light conditions. Um, that's pretty, pretty clear there. It's a pretty low light, not like like can't see your hand in front of your face thing. Um, expect walking. It's actually a lot less walking than I thought. Um, I thought it would be like lots of walking. Everything's fairly close, similar um, in distance. There are some stairs if you choose to go up and down them, especially when you go from level to level on the cell blocks. Um, if you choose to, and I highly suggest you go higher because it's way different than way below. Um, and then the heights, there is some heights. You can go all the way to the fourth level and walk across a couple like catwalks that are literally like this wide. Um, and they're really high up and they're just bars. They are safe to walk across, but they are a little weird because they're very high up. So, uh, oh, the acoustics, actually it wasn't bad. Um, I was surprised, um, it wasn't echoey. But probably considering where I work now, I'm used to very loud and poor acoustics in a, in a concrete building. So to me, I might call that normal now in most people. But um, overall, though, it wasn't bad. Um, supposedly paranormal ooh, activity, right? Uh, supposed to be haunted. Just to throw that out there. I don't know why. You never know. I've been to the Velisca Axe Murder House. I didn't believe in ghosts until I went to that place. And then there's things I couldn't explain. So um, another thing is dressing for the weather. There is no air conditioning and there is no heat. So when I was there on third Friday morning, it was a little chilly out. So the buildings weren't bad, um, but it's again, it's not heated nor cooled. So you got to kind of plan for the weather um, and what to expect one on one um, instruction in all in all levels across the entire um, workshop from the night before to the day of and all that stuff. So um, hands-on shooting, obviously it's a workshop, right? But, you know, it's gonna allow you to get more hands-on stuff. I know of workshops that people go to where it's more just like, let's go to a separate place like a retreat and just talk and that's not what it's about. Um, and then total, you're gonna get total hours, about seven hours of instruction between the probably eight maybe, or a little bit more between the two classes, the printing and the editing section, and the what to expect, how to photograph, and some of that the night before, and then obviously while we're there. And obviously we're gonna have a whole lot of freaking fun and adventure because um, I knew I would be excited to go last Friday and see the place, but once I got in there, I was like, oh boy, like just in the first five minutes of waiting around for the lady to give me the tour, I could have made photos right there on the spot, so. Um, so that was super nice. Um, you know, so I, it's one of those things too, even if you're in a rut and it's a new place, it you'll just be like you're not in a new rut anymore. So let's talk about images or show about images. So this is gonna kind of give you an idea if you haven't seen them online already that I posted, but there's a lot too though that um, 
I haven't posted. So, so uh, this is on the way to the second uh, uh, cell block. Um, after the oldest one, you walk right past here. That's an outdoor rec yard. Um, so you can see you've got old and new. Um, oh, the kit. I can talk about the kit I use, Dennis, um, real quick. Uh, so if you don't know the word kit, it's like your camera. So I use my Nikon Z6 II and 24 to 70. That's all I used while I was there because, well, I lie. I took two photos with the 14 to 30 F4, the super wide angle, um, inside a cell block or inside a cell looking out, which I don't think I have that one in here. Um, oh, thanks, Don. Um, that, that's probably what I primarily shot. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I did was those two, but it's mostly 99% of the time, 24 to 70. Um, setting wise was wide as I could get on aperture about F4 and then hand holdable. So I was about a hundredth to 200th of a second and a pretty high ISO, obviously, uh, probably 1600 or a little above. So, um, so yeah, so this is the older cell block straight ahead or what newer one, I think, um, that I think they're, they're, tearing down because it's it's not in good condition um but kind of give you an idea of you know it rained the night the day before um we went so we had thunderstorms the night before um, so this is the outside this is the outside wall so there's detailed shots on the outside you can take um even after the tour if we want to stay there for a minute or two and photograph the outside we sure can um, it's a pretty flexible day as long as everybody agrees, but something different. Um, I actually took this one while I was waiting for my mom and them to get done with their tour. Mine was only about an hour and a half and hers ended up being like two or three. So you can definitely, you, the one thing you'll see at the prison if, um, is you can tell the age based off all the building materials over, over the years because you've got mostly limestone on the old stuff and then you have brick on the newer stuff and stuff like that so this is hard to, i don't know it might show up dark on your screen but this is a window going through um an entrance door into like a cell block so it's a cage so obviously it would have been a secure door facility door to before you get into the actual inmate population area um so there's lots of stuff. I mean, like I said, high contrast, right? We got blacks all the way to bright window. Um, it's you definitely can use light here to your advantage to create some really cool um, images. So this one is the inside on the first floor of a cell block to the left, all the cell doors. It's hard for me to see, but I think it's the glare off my um, light over here, but um, I mean, this is what you're seeing. This is how dark it is in there. So you've got a lot of natural light. So that wall's lit up in the back and that door it's lit up. That's all light coming through windows on this side. So it's super, super contrasty in um, lighting. So this was one of probably my more favorite images that I didn't post. Um, this is actually that last shot. This is behind. So I turned around and took a shot there. Um, so that's all just window light and you got that nice like lit up little patch on the floor and that little just a little spill light on that back wall to light it up. So super, super cool um, place. I mean, like I said, there's so much in details you could photograph from cracks into walls to pipes and windows. And I don't know if I, I got a couple window shots. Ah, speak of the devil, windows. So look at the color. So the windows are aged with, I don't know what is on that, but it's color. And then in some cell blocks, it wasn't just like a tan paint. So at some point they painted it blue. So this is literally just a window. So you can see the bars on the outside of the window and then the glass panes on the inside. So definitely lots of color and texture to be found. And another window. So this is just literally the window itself. Another window, same cell block, first floor, about all these images are about, I don't know, 20 feet apart. Um, and, you know, something different, right? So at one point, somebody, I don't know why, but these windows have been painted over. And then over the years, the sun has cracked the paint and it's dried up and fell off. So super cool. Lots of texture. Ah, here we are. So this is obviously... Um, these are all cells on the left. 
this is in the second cell, uh, in the second block, cell block, um, towards the end, if I remember right. And this was, the door was lit up, that cell, well, that security door, if that's what you want to call it, that uh, barred door straight ahead was lit up by window light. So it's really, again, one of those things that you're going to be able to use light to your advantage. And if you're not used to shooting in varying light, um, it's, it will be a challenge, but not a bad challenge, nothing I can't help you with. Again, windows, same windows, um, you know, this one I shot in square, but um, I didn't look and I noticed this while I was there, but she was talking to me. There's actual papers in the window and I'm super curious to what they are on there, what it says, um, but they're not, they've never been, they're not moved, they haven't been moved in ages, so. Um, I was going to, I thought in my head I should shoot a detailed shot of that. And then we got talking about something history and then we, I walked down the hall and we left. <laughs> I forgot. Oh, oh, look, I added that picture in a second time. Skip over it. So this is the second cell house. So if I go back that last slide, I had a picture that building on the far left, that old looking one, this is it. So you can see the texture, the paint on the bars has gone um it's it's super cool so again this this door the the cell door being lit up that's from window light uh behind me oh tom says sounds like a fun and creative idea for a themed photo shoot uh dressing like prison inmates would have a unique cohesive look to the group i like that um i thought about finding it should be like you know uh t-shirts it's like i've survived justin's first workshop at a prison or something and make it funny <laughs> but uh totally yeah totally something super cool Super cool place. So this is actually going to the beginning. This is the oldest cell house. So this would have been your oldest one. Um, probably dates, if I remember back, to Civil War era. Um, this is a cell, so you can see how narrow the doors are on this compared to like the newer cell blocks that we just saw. But all this light coming from that top left frame all the way down to the bottom right, that is all natural light coming through the windows at probably... 9 40 45 10 in the morning and in the end of the cell block there's a huge ass window it's super cool which i don't have a photo of it but um but again so now you can really see I, the, everything you're going to be like moving um through there's so much history there it's just amazing so this is the i don't i think i think hoping that this is the all female cell house that was created or built eventually after they got enough females. Um, but this is super cool. This is probably the first place we went into, I believe. Um, I think it's on the tour. Um, the one thing I really like about this part building is there's lots of artwork, um, which I got a picture here coming up. Um, <laughs> Dennis says he thought the same thing, oh brother or Shawshank. Totally, I will agree with that, Dennis. Um, that oldest cell house gives you the old brother wear out thou feel. But this is, you know, this is kind of what you see when you go. It's low light. Um, there's lots of artwork. She told me after it was, I think after it was closed up in 04, they used this for AA meetings. I have no clue why you'd use the prison for Alcoholics Anonymous. I was a little confused by her explaining of what it was or what they did, or maybe they used it during the prison. I really don't know, but um, I should probably look into that, but I couldn't find any history on that part. But super cool. I mean, you're gonna get a lot of um, leading lines here to use leading lines to go from one to um, all the way to the end. So it's lots of, again, lines and texture and color and light. That's what this whole place is about. I think we're getting it. Oh, here we are, artwork. So I think this was something that had to do with, right, Dennis, LOL, AA meeting, right? I mean, <laughs> is what it is. But that's that's what she said. And I think this is, she said, like the different steps through the AA meetings, they had like painted on the walls. And over the years, obviously this has curled and cracked and peeled. So this is the artwork that they had. Um, I had another photo that I took of, of a more complete artwork, but it, it just seemed kind of boring. Ah, so that's the photos. Oh, Connie, leading lines, 24, uh, 2024 Iowa State Fair theme. 
So now I've only got about uh, five, six slides left, but lodging. So I decided to forego the hotel um, because the hotel was going to jack the price up over $1,000 just for two nights stay alone, just the cost of two nights. They're about $180. Um, and I tried to get a better rate and they did give me a better rate, but it literally dropped everything like $20 is ridiculous. So then I needed to think of a place to teach the classes. So I asked for a rental room at the hotel. They wanted $300 a day and they wouldn't allow me to have one just count like two days as one because they only need it for like six hours total. So then that way to fricking raise the price to astronomically just stupid price. So I said, screw it. So I asked a couple friends um, and I was like, you know, what do you want? You want to stay together? Don't stay together. And everybody's like, okay, let's stay together. And then some people was like, someone's like, how about an Airbnb? And I was like, I don't know about that. So it was hard, but you'll see it's going to be very low minimums of people, but I have a solution for that. Um, so there's a place called the Maple House. It's a four bedroom uh, house, four bedrooms, three baths. So super open, wide, uh, don't have a million people. You know, it's super short to everywhere to go eat. I even have your food figured out where we can go for dinner and breakfast and lunch. Um, that's not included in the workshop, but, um, well, one one meal is, I think, if I remember. I, I planned it too long ago. But super easy, accessible, lots of parking. Um, very nice house. Um, I found a really cool house that was 10 bedrooms, 10 bath, but I didn't, it was like, $1,800 for two nights, but I didn't know if I'd get enough people to sign up for it. So I, I would try to price that at the bare minimum of only a few people and it astronomically was high, but I, I didn't know how many people would sign up, but so it's a super nice place. So this is going to give you that camaraderie. Everybody's got their spaces. Um, you'll be able to go through and there's places to hang out. Uh, it's be very relaxed. I can bring and going to bring the computer and the setup to projector. So super easy. So definitely a place I'll have coffee and all that good crap too. So, so it'll be like just being like at home. So here's our itinerary. So it's, it's kind of jam packed really, but September 23rd. Oh, I forgot to change it. It says hotel check-in. It is not hotel check-in. It is the Airbnb at three. I think it's actually four there at the Airbnb. So nobody has to be there till four o'clock. You can come later, but you might miss some stuff. Um, so from, you will get checked in about four o'clock at five to six 30 or later. Don't much matter to me. Um, uh, we'll have dinner at sweet smoke barbecue. So I tried sweet smoke barbecue downtown in Jefferson city and it was phenomenal. So, um, typical barbecue place, 10 to $12 you know, or less, maybe a little higher if you go all crazy. Um, and then we'll come back about, I don't know, seven to nine-ish, maybe, I don't know, might be less. I'll do that first class. So we'll just hang out. I'm going to talk about the day, things you can do, making a photograph versus taking a photograph and thinking through your process and things like that. Um, I want that class that's going to be really laid back. We're just going to go through things, talk about things. You know, people can post questions and we can answer each other's questions. So super laid back. But, you know, somebody say Corey goes and Corey says, oh, this is how I do it. And then Justin says, this is how I do it. And Sally says, this is how I do it. And so on and so forth. Right. So it's a very like kind of we're all teaching each other in a sense. And then from nine to when God forbid, whenever you want to go to bed, I don't care. Um, social time. So I don't care. We can talk, shop, whatever. Just get to know everybody. It'll be super cool, I think. Um, so the next day, I'm going to have breakfast uh, for Airbnb. So that starts at 6 in the morning because we have to be at the penitentiary at 7.30. Um, and then from 8 to 1 is the workshop. So it's five full hours of nonstop photo taking. Um, and it's nuts. So it'll be super cool. We're going to have a later lunch at 1.00. To three, there's a place called Prison Brews. I didn't get to try it, but it's like a brewery. It's prison themed, obviously. Um, so that would be kind of fun. And then from three to six, we're gonna do the editing slash print class. Um, everybody's gonna be able to print four of their own images with me. And I'll go through, we'll load them into my Lightroom. 
we'll do some work through, and then we'll print them off. And then you'll get to actually take four physical prints home. So you're gonna get the whole process from visually seeing it, creating it up here, putting it into the, the black box and the black tube, editing it on your computer if you choose to bring it, or your laptop, and then bam, we're gonna print them. And then you're gonna have the whole full circle, right? So why not? Oh, Esther says Prism Bruise is good. Good. Um, I tried to go off all that stuff by literally by like reviews and looking at menus and food. Um, so the picture on the bottom right hand corner, that is Sweet Smoke Barbecue. So I'm kind of a picky person when it comes to mac and cheese. Their mac and cheese is actually pretty good. Um, I think that was like 17 bucks, but it was two sides, like two or three meats or something. I don't know. So it wasn't bad. And then, but it's a, a variety of menu. Um, so then that night for dinner, we're going to do dinner from 6.30 to 8 at the Grand Cafe. Um, it's kind of a little more uppy scale kind of cafe. Um, and then from 8 to whenever we decide to go to bed kind of thing, or you decide to whenever social time again. And then the last day will be very quick. Um, get up 9 a.m. We'll all go out to breakfast, if you choose to, um, to the High Rise Bakery. I actually stopped by High Rise Bakery not thinking about it. Um, food looked really good, uh, good coffee because they bought a coffee there. So, you know, I try to keep things kind of different. I don't want to get things like too weird for food, things that are, you know, Midwestern fare and things we're all used to, right? Nothing too crazy. Almost there's a really cool restaurant there, but it was kind of pricey and I just wanted to keep it because that's one thing that's not included other than breakfast at the Airbnb that I'll include. Um, I've got, I don't know, ideas for that. I, I bagels and that kind of crap, light, easy breakfast. Um, but we'll do that and that's September 25th. So then we'll all hang out there and I guess we can leave when we want and everybody can leave. Um, I know from Cedar Rapids, I believe it's like a four, four and a half ish hour trip um, kind of thing. So kind of the itinerary will be flexible if we get done earlier, we can go to dinner earlier. I'm not gonna be like, oh, we gotta be on time. So totally different. So the can I had to come up with a cancellation policy um, just, I never had to do it, but I think I try to keep it easy. So once you sign up, um, that's available on the website after nine, if you choose to do it today. And I would, because I have a feeling this is going to go quick, um, that I have a non-refundable deposit of $65 and that's required due to the penitentiary. That's the admission to the penitentiary. If what we have four people at go that's my minimum right and one person cancels i give you money back except the 65 because i have to pay them that for the workshop um uh important date so a full refund is available until september 15th minus the 65 dollar deposit admission fee um because for some reason if everybody had to cancel that's still time for me to cancel the airbnb and get funds back to give fun refunds and all that stuff. Hopefully nobody has to, but um, the only other mandatory requirement that I have to have you do is you have to sign a waived, a waiver for the Missouri State Penitentiary tour slash workshop. They require that of everyone. So that's something. Um, so kind of what I'm gonna do is you sign up and you're on the list um, a couple weeks before um, I'll send out information. Again, more of a, a hard, itinerary um i'll send the link so it's an online waiver it goes directly to them um that kind of stuff i even thought about maybe having a zoom meeting with everybody just so everybody can kind of touch base and say hi i'm so and so before you show up to the airbnb and you're like who are you right um icebreaker thing with you don't have to be in, in person <laughs> so um or maybe even if everybody's local i don't know i've i've had some people that were interested in from California, so I don't know. Um, you never know who's gonna stumble across what in the world of Googling um, to just kind of get to know everybody too and all that good stuff. So you're probably wondering what is this whole freaking thing gonna cost me if I choose to go, right? And when we think of photo workshops, we're thinking thousand plus or more thousands of dollars and all these travel expenses. Well, the only thing that you have to pay for really is in the price of the workshop is breakfast one day, the time to teach that kind of stuff in your lodging, right? I didn't want to get this to be an astronomical thing because there are so many workshops in my life I've wanted to go to and it's expensive. And I'm just like, oh, I can't, I could probably 
do it, but I probably shouldn't. So it's like, oh my God, so you, I'm assuming you probably won't be freaked out too much about the cost. You'll probably might be a little bit surprised, um, but it's only $450. So, but I only have five spots and because that's for the Airbnb, but I don't want to tell anybody, no, you can't come. So if you want to come without lodging, I have a price for that. You will just have to find your own lodging. It is going to be more than $450 for you at that point, because an average hotel, it's nice in Jefferson City is about 150 to 180 a night. So um, you might be able to find some things or got a membership somewhere I'll get you. But so there's only five spots in theory to stay at the Airbnb because there's only one bed per and less we get enough people crazy enough to sign up that we could do the 10 room place. But I, then I'd have to probably reconfigure some pricing and I don't want to change it obviously after you've done it. So only $450. Now, the butt part is, well, how much does it cost me? If there, you do not want lodging, no lodging, you have to figure out lodging yourself. I'm only charging $325. $325 is because I've taken the cost of the lodging. So you're literally what I had to charge for two nights of the Airbnb rental per person at a minimum of four at cost to get this figured out. That's about what you're spending one night in a hotel down there. So it's like, one night and then free. So you're like, you're not paying for the next night. So really overall, it's pretty affordable. Um, originally with my pricing, I had over right about a thousand or over. And that I just, that's not where I wanted to be. My original price in my head was I wanted to do this at 500 per person. And I was like, you know what, let's, if we can get this below 500, let's do it. So on my website, they'll be available the link. There's one I don't know why it's organized on my website this way, but the very first one shows up is with lodging. And then the very last item on the website under artisan store at the top right hand corner of the, what my website, you click on that and it'll take you to a page with all my products. So the mentoring stuff you can purchase. If you're not familiar, I was selling some photo t-shirts on there. I still do um, there. It's all mixed in together, but then the lodging one will be at the bottom, right? Um, if you have questions, let me know, but I have a feeling this is going to go, fairly quick. I think I only limited, I limited it to a total of 10. So the non-lodging, I only have five spots because I wanted to keep it small. I don't want to teach a group larger than 10. So one thing I should mention is even if you get your lodging offsite and you do the three and a quarter um, bit, you still can come to the house that night to do the classes and hang out and all that stuff, right? There's plenty of space. It's a whole entire house to us. So um, you can still come and partake and all that and come to dinner. It's that, that's not like you can't do anything else. It's just the lodging. You know, somebody who told me, why don't you just charge the same price with lodging without? Well, that's dumb. Then I feel like I'm stealing money from you because you're then literally buying, you're spending a lot more. So um, I just wanted to keep it super, super, super affordable. And some people probably rake me over the coals that this is way too freaking cheap. Sure, it probably is. But you know what? I don't give a shit, to be honest. Um, I hate it when there's things, education in general. I don't think people should, if you want to learn, there should be no hindrance to money really to learn something. I was looking at some Santa Fe workshops that I wanted to go do. They're well known in the workshop world. And they have some online ones up, but they won $500 for like a one day online class. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I, it's just like, am I going to get enough of that? Yeah, out of it. So I just want to try to keep it super, super affordable. So, um, so, with, oh yeah. So any questions, type away. Does anybody have any questions to the workshop or things or things like that? Connie says I'm pouting because of my scheduling conflict. Y'all are going to have a great time. Great price. I know, right? I know I was really hoping you were going to be able to make it, but, you know, family things that comes up, right? Um, maybe if it's popular enough, we'll do it again next year. Um, I should probably really start thinking about a photo workshop for 2025 because due to the planning of this and, and how much time it takes to get hotels and people called and I should probably start planning one for fall of 2025 but I don't know what I would do so no questions I'll come on 
somebody's bound to have a question. I never answer everybody's question but one. There's always that delay between me and the internet. Oh, what are the dates again? Duh, that would have been a good thing. Um, Jimmy, many Christmases? Let me pull up my phone. I think it's the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of September. What's the weather? It's Missouri, Dennis. Um, so it's southern Missouri. So it's probably going to be like decently warm still in September. Um, ride sharing. Um, if somebody wants to ride along, uh, more than welcome to. Um, somebody asked if they could ride with me, but I don't think I can because of the business insurance aspect. I can't take workshop ease with my business insurance. I have to look at that. I'm pretty sure I can't. Um, but I can definitely um, put out there that if you go and somebody else is going from Cedar Rapids area and you want to ride together, um, I can put that out on Facebook to, or hook everybody up without giving your information out um, publicly. Uh, let me look here. Let me find my calendar, Megan. Pretty sure those are the dates. So September, whoops, September, September. Yes, 23rd, 24th, and 25th. So 23rd, 24th, 25th, those are our dates. So um, I want to do it on a weekend so people probably wouldn't have to take like time off. But unfortunately, they only offer the work, the photo parts on non busier days because you are taking up the five hours of their touring season. So, oh, I guess this almost did take a full hour. So, any other, oh, what website do I go to to sign up? Whew, that's an idiot. I just expect everybody to know my website. So, it's tedfordphoto.com. So T E D F O R D P H O T O dot com. So my last name, sorry, my last name photo.com. So so it is definitely there to sign up. Any other questions? I don't know how I missed yours, Tom. And that was right above Dennis's. I don't know. It's weird. Who knows? Who knows? It's technology, right? I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I can include that I just I'm just excited that there's interest in it to be honest. Um I've had interest for quite a while on it. I've had lots of questions come through Facebook, so oh look, look at Connie Go. Connie just posted the link um to the workshop. That's the page and it says notify me um from that link i believe but if you go to the artisans store tab then that will actually all the details are pretty much on the, the workshop page and then if you want to purchase it um you can go to the store so con your admin assistance that's what, that's what corey said <laughs> oh hey right oh some days i i God, I could have a virtual assistant. I get like weekly emails from companies saying, do you need a virtual assistant? But I don't have the funds to pay a virtual assistant what they want. Um, I was actually looking into uh, a lady who specializes in bookkeeping for photographers and holy buckets. I know that's a very specialized skill set, but it's like $700 a month to have somebody do your books. Oh, thank you, Diane. Um, and literally for no more than the transactions I have in a month, I can do it myself if I just sit down and do it. Um, because then you get lazy if you don't do your own books, in my opinion, like, or at least know your basics of your books. No one wants to listen about taxes. Taxes stress me out. Megan probably knows all about that. <laughs> she has her business. Um, any other questions or anything before we wrap this dog and pony show up? sign off for the night so um oh i should mention so obviously thank you guys for coming as always if you want to support the show you can go to the little scanny tron thing at the top and and do that enough said about that um what else oh so i'll probably do one next week i really apologize for not like having the lives as as frequently as i have but um I kind of slowed down at the end of the year. Oh, look, and there goes Connie again. She has a link to the actual workshop on Facebook um, in the comments of the live. Thank you again, Connie. Um, but 
I just, there's lots of going on and I was kind of mentally drained and I almost kind of thought about not even doing this anymore. But then I thought, no, I can't because everybody shows up and then I feel like I'm letting people down. But then at the same time, I did it tonight and I, I love doing this. So I just coming up with stuff. I need to come up with some stuff. I got a whole list of crap over there I should do. Um, but how was this going with that rant? ADAD, ADHD brain tip over. Um, oh, yeah. I'll probably do something next week. Um, I might, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do next week. I'll figure out something. But I leave for LA on April 5th. So for probably, I won't have another live after next week until mid, if not probably end of April. Um, I thought about going live while I was on the road and kind of talk about the adventure so far, but um, I had somebody tell me I should focus on myself and enjoy my trip and do what I'm there to do. So I'm going to take that advice um, and kind of go from there. So and I still keep trying to figure out what I'm doing with this Route 66 thing outside of photographing it. Um, I thought about doing a really limited edition book, um, really high quality, but the book would be like $80 for somebody like, actually, no, that'd be my cost. Yeah. My cost 75 to $80 to print this book. And then I have to like, at least make it worth my time charge well over a hundred. I don't think anybody do that, but, um, uh, thank you, Diane. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, thought about doing that. I don't know. Who knows? Um, it may just be something. I have another idea in my brain for a project I should work on. Um, that might, focus on all areas of America, but not so much travel, mostly Iowa and probably the Route 66 thing, but I don't know where I'm going to go with that quite yet. Um, oh, fun Route 66 workshop at a favorite spot. That would be fun, but that would be hard um, because Route 66 is so spread out. There might be some places, like the California part would be interesting. Now you got my brain thinking. But then I have to figure out travel, like how would we get from point A to point B? That would definitely be an expensive one. Because I'd have to get a charter bus kind of thing, van. Hmm, I don't know. I might even be a workshop for two years from now. Who knows, right? So any other final questions or anything? If not, um, just that's some updates. I'm trying to think if there's anything else for updates on peeps. Want to know, but looking around my office other than it's a exotic mess in here. Um, that's usually I thought I'd trip my brain, but yeah, no, okay. Uh, Cadillac Ranch in that area, um, that's Amarillo. Um, it's not much around Amarillo that I know of outside of Cadillac Ranch. Shamrock, Texas would be cool, but that'd be a couple hundred miles of traveling. I'll have to think about that, Diane. Thanks for the idea. So, um, well, I will sign off for the evening, and we will see everybody next week. I have no clue what we'll talk about next week. So if you have ideas, send me messages. Um, try to think of some things that might be coming up this summer that you could photograph that I haven't talked about. Oh, awesome. Tom just said he just signed up. That is awesome. So that is super cool. Thank you, Tom. That, that makes me happy. <laughs> just because I'm... I'm, I got people interested. So awesome. So will you guys all have a good night? We are going to sign off. I will see you all next week. If you got solar eclipse, I don't even know how to photograph the solar eclipse. I'll actually be on the solar eclipse when, um, well, when I'm on my route 66. So, well, I will sign off. If not, I will keep blabbing all night long. You are welcome, Megan. And as always, Tom, and thank you for showing up. And Corey, as always, and Connie, and Diane, and God, probably people I name. There's people that still at Tony Gun here, and I don't know everybody. So awesome. Well, we are going to sign off. Have a wonderful evening. I will see everybody next Thursday, or next Thursday, next Thursday from 8 to 9. So, oh, you're welcome. Oh, and Esther signed up as well. Awesome. We are on the route to having the